Zapier got kind of expensive. If you're looking for a more cost-effective alternative, you're in the right place. Normally, cost-effective or cheaper means worse, but honestly, not at all in this case. I'm gonna show you one of my favorite Zapier alternatives, a great automation platform. I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me, and if you'd like to learn more ways to automate your business and get more productive, hit that subscribe button below. Today, I'm going to be talking about Make, formerly Integromat. It's a really awesome automation platform. Uh, even though I'm on grandfathered Zapier pricing, so it's actually not that expensive for me at this point, I'm finding that I go to make more and more these days simply because I can do more in it. And I'll get into the uh, pros and cons later in this video. I've actually done a comparison video on these two platforms before, and I'll link up below in the description so you can go and watch that. But a few things have changed since then. The video is a little bit outdated. I mean, one of the platforms has changed name from Integromat to Make in that time, and as well as they, they updated the back end of the platform quite a bit as well. But it looks pretty much the same on the surface. So a lot of the video will apply. Since you're looking for an alternative to Zapier, and price might be a big part of that decision, let's just start there. I've got the pricing pages open here. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the free plan. You can see here with Zapier, we've got the free plan, there's 100 tasks per month, and it's limited to only single step Zap. So that means really basic workflows only. So I'm gonna have a trigger, like when something happens, it might be when someone fills out a contact form, add them to a spreadsheet. So that's a trigger and an action. That is what they call a single step Zap. They don't count the trigger as a step. Um, but that's about as advanced as you can get with the Zapier free plan. And you can do 100 tasks a month. And I'll talk about how tasks work in a moment. If we jump over to Make, we can see their free plan has 1,000 operations a month. So we're talking about operations versus tasks. They almost work in the same way, but there are some differences. One major difference, though, is... On Make, you can pretty much do whatever you want on the free plan. You could build a really complicated workflow that uses 50 operations every time it gets used and only runs you know, within that thousand a month, but they don't limit you on how complicated you can make things. In fact, when it comes to features, the main thing I really care about with Make is this full text search. Depending on how advanced you're gonna go, you might care about some more of these features here. But up until this point, yeah, like I don't, they don't really feature gate all that much. Whereas over on Zapier, like I said, you only get the single step zaps on the free plan. Uh, so you can't even get into even slightly more complicated workflows until you're on that 20 USD plan. But a really important feature here is auto replay. I am really surprised that this is on this level, to be honest. So what that does is, when a workflow fails for whatever reason, so maybe when you try to add a row to a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet app is down for a minute, if that fails, you have to go and run that manually yourself again later. Whereas with auto replay, it'll just do it by itself. And honestly, I find it pretty much a necessity to have that. Otherwise, you will end up having to replay things yourself, which kind of defeats the purpose of automation. I really don't think this should be here, but um, you can see Zapier just do a bit more feature gating. And the same with this custom logic and paths. So the ability to create more complicated workflows where you might branch a workflow and say like, if a new lead comes into my system, I want to add them to my CRM. If they're an existing lead, I wanna do something else, like update them in my billing system, whatever it is. If you wanna do different things based on conditions, that's only on this plan with Zapier. Both of the equivalent things in Make are actually included on the free plan. So that's a pretty massive difference if you're just starting out and you don't really wanna jump up the pricing tiers that quickly. But the core thing that really differentiates the pricing between Zapier and Make is the number of tasks or operations. You can see these are like the default levels. I think that's the minimum on each, right? So if you're on the professional level, you get 2K tasks per month as the minimum and you can boost it up. So if we were to boost that to 10K, that price jumps up to 130 on that professional plan. But if we go over to make, you can see the minimum is 10,000 per month and that's only, you know, 16 bucks and it goes up from there. So at first glance, it's a lot cheaper, right? Both of these are currently set to annual pricing, so it obviously jumps up a little bit if you're gonna choose monthly. 
similar levels there, but you can also see the pricing is just way down on make. It's pretty hard to know off the bat how many operations you're going to need. So if you're not sure, I just suggest starting on the minimum and you can always increase it later. But there is one thing you've got to think about with this pricing is Zapier and Make actually count their tasks and operations in different ways just to make things more complicated. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how they differ. I've made a couple of similar workflows in Zapier and Make. What we're doing is when a person gets added to a spreadsheet, we're gonna check if the lead score is greater than five. So that's just one of the columns in the spreadsheet. We're gonna see if it's greater than five. If so, we'll add them to our CRM. And then if the lead score is greater than 10, we'll strip the website domain from the email address. So if it was bob at example.com, we'll just strip out example.com and we'll send ourselves an email with uh, the email address and the link to the website. This is what the same workflow looks like over at Make. So quite a little bit different, but let's have a look at how the task and operations usage differ. In Zapier, triggers never count and a filter only counts if it passes. So if someone was added to this spreadsheet and the lead score was three, you'd actually have no tasks used at all. And further down, we're using one of Zapier's built-in functions here called a text formatter, which is going to get that website address out of the email. So that is one action in itself. So if this runs all the way through, the trigger doesn't count, we're gonna use five tasks. Over at Make, things work a little bit differently. Triggers always count as an operation and filters never do. So both of these filters aren't going to cost you anything in this case. And we're also replicating the text formatter using Make's inline functions. These don't use operations at all. They're just a bit more complicated to use. If you haven't got automation or programming experience, this is kind of hard to wrap your head around. But once you do, you can do some pretty complicated stuff in here that doesn't use any operations at all. There's a lot of different functions you can use in Make. These are ones that work with text. These are ones that work with arrays, but that's a little bit beyond the topic of this video. The point is you can actually do a lot in line without using any operations. However, one thing you have to be careful with in Make is polling. And that is Make has to go out and check Google Sheets every so often to see if there are any new rows. And you define how often that is down here. So if you set this to one minute and it's going to check Google Sheets every single minute of the day and finding no new rows, that's still gonna count as one operation every time. So you can burn through operations really fast if you don't manage your polling intervals properly. This does not count for any triggers that are labeled as instant here. So in this case, instead of Make having to check Google Sheets, Google Sheets is sending a message to Make to say, hey, something's changed. So that means you don't need to do any polling whatsoever. So you can see there's kind of pros and cons on both sides. While you can do some complicated workflows with Make that don't count as operations, let's say you added 100 people to this Google Sheet that had a lead score of one, in Zapier that will use no tasks whatsoever because this will fire 100 times, this won't pass, and all 100 of those won't use any tasks at all. But if you did the same thing at Make, this trigger could be fired 100 times and use 100 operations. So ultimately it comes down to what kind of workflows you're building in which one would actually use more or less tasks. There are plenty of examples where Zapier would use less and plenty where Make would use less. This is one of the main reasons I still use both platforms because sometimes it just makes more sense to build in Zapier and sometimes it makes more sense to build in Make. I will say however that with Make, as you saw before, you're getting generally a lot more operations for the same price as you would on Zapier. So generally, almost always, Make is going to work out to be much more cost-effective than Zapier. Up until now, pretty much all I've spoken about is pricing, which is obviously a massive reason why you might wanna use Make over Zapier. But let's just look at a few other comparison items. Again, go and have a look at my other video. The link is in the description below. I'm just gonna do a quick summary of the things where I think each platform excels. So generally I find that Zapier is a little bit more newbie friendly the first time you use it. This is a really simple UI where you can just see one thing after another, what is happening uh, in your workflow. That's not to say make isn't simple as well, 
I have no problems with this whatsoever. In fact, in a lot of scenarios, especially more complicated workflows, I find this easier to look at. So for example, if I pull up a more complicated workflow, in this case, we've got two different paths we might go down depending on the lead score. So if it's greater than five, we're going to do this action here. And if it's less, we're gonna do a different action. That's kind of complicated to follow, right? Cause you have to kind of go into each path to see what's happening. Whereas in make, it kind of just looks like that. So we can see, you know, if this condition's matched, we're gonna do this. If these conditions are matched, we're gonna do this. And this is a screenshot of a much more complicated workflow that I built for a client quite a long time ago. And you can see how many branches and different things are going on here. Good luck trying to build something like this in Zapier and being able to follow what is going on. It's just way too hard. So you can see when you get into the complicated stuff, it's just much easier uh, with Make, in my opinion. Zapier also does have more integrations. So if we have a look at the apps page on Zapier, it says 5,000 plus apps. There's actually a lot more that are in beta that you can't see on the public page here. If we jump over to make, you can see right now there's uh, 1,377. That said, if the apps you do want to use are on make, it doesn't really matter. So I would just come to both of these pages here at zapier.com slash apps and make.com uh, integrations. And if you search, you know, if you're using, I don't know, active campaign, for example, which is the CRM I use, I can see it's there. And if I search it here, um, it'll show up. So I can see that it's on both platforms, so it might not be that much of an issue, you know, that Zapier has more integrations. Um, but yeah, just have a look at both of those. So in summary, I find Zapier to be a bit more newbie friendly. It's got more integrations, it's been around longer. Whereas on the side of Make, I find it's much better to build complex workflows and in general, the pricing is just much better. You saw how many more operations are included at the same price for make. Yeah, they count the way they're used a little bit differently. Sometimes that's a positive, sometimes that's a negative, but you get so many more operations. It usually just doesn't matter. To be truthful, I use both still pretty regularly in my business. I err towards make just because I'm doing more advanced things these days uh, and because it's cheaper when I'm doing things that require a lot of operations. Again, go and have a look at the video that compares these two platforms in a bit more detail. The link is in the description below. Just a few things I'd like to add is that both platforms have added some things since then. Make has in fact pretty much got rid of a lot of my biggest bugbears. So I'm actually really happy with Make and I think that's probably why I end up using it a bit more. I hope that's been helpful in your search for a Zapier alternative. I would recommend checking out Make. I'll drop a link below so you can go and sign up for a Make account. I would start on the free plan for now and just see how that goes. And once you're comfortable with it, you can move up. If you do use that link, it helps support this channel and helps me make videos like this for you guys. So I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and Content Snare. And if you have found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment below if you've got any questions. See you in the next video.